I don't want to be a product of my environment. I want my environment to be a product of me. No one gives it to you. You have to take it. There isn't anything on earth that I will hide from or back up from. Greg Scarpa known on the street as the Grim Reaper, was one of the Mafia's most notorious killers. Scarpa reportedly joined the Mafia during the 1950s and eventually became a captain in the Colombo crime family, operating out of the Wimpy Boys Social Club. Greg Scarpa was a capo for the Colombo crime family. And Greg Scarpa was considered very, very dangerous. Not only was Gregory Scarpa known as a, as a killer on the street, you know, they used to call him the Grim Reaper, but Gregory was a bona fide tough guy. He was good with his hands and he had a reputation that he'll throw a good beating on you if you crossed him. Gregory Gregory wasn't a guy that you wanted to screw around with because Gregory would, would kill you in a heartbeat. In 1962, Scarpa was arrested for armed robbery and in order to avoid prosecution, became an informant for the FBI. It is even alleged that Greg Scarpa was sent by the FBI to Mississippi to locate the missing bodies of three civil rights workers who were thought to have been murdered by the Ku Klux Klan. In 1980, FBI agent Lynn DeVecchio rekindled the relationship between the Bureau and Greg Scarpa to obtain information about the Colombo as well as other Mafia families. On December 29, 1992, Greg Scarpa, in poor health after contracting HIV from a blood transfusion, would cross paths with a crew of Lucchese gangsters after his stepson had a dispute over drugs with Mikey Flattop DeRosa. Hey, what's up, guys? I wanted to take a second to remind you, please hit that subscribe button. And if you like what we're doing and want to support the channel, you can do that via Cash App at American Made Channel. Now, let's jump into the video. Mikey Flattop DeRosa was an up-and-coming gangster who operated a drug crew under the protection of the Lucchese family. Flattop DeRosa was an earner on the streets of Brooklyn. And all of these guys ran together, if you will, even though they were from different families. And Mikey DeRosa handled the crew for the Lucchese crime family. And he kicked up to a guy named Froggy Galeon. DeRosa's first introduction to the Lucchese crime family came from James Froggy Galeon. Who grew me was Jimmy. He was a good guy. You know, he was more like a an older brother. I looked up to him. Jimmy Galeon proposed DeRosa to become a main member of the Lucchese crime family. A dispute over drug money between Mikey Flattop DeRosa and Joey Shiro Scarpa would eventually lead Mikey DeRosa face to face with the Grim Reaper. I got into a beef with Joey Scarpa, which is Greg Scarpa's son. Joey Shiro was the stepson of Gregory Scarpa, and Joey Shiro was a drug dealer, and he basically operated under uh, Greg Scarpa's umbrella. Mikey DeRosa would confront Joey Randazzo, a drug dealer who worked for Joey Shiro Scarpa, over money owed to him. Joey Shiro Scarpa would confront DeRosa with a baseball bat, but would quickly retreat after DeRosa pulled a gun. Well, Greg was sitting on the couch. He was having a drink, and he wasn't acting as himself because he had gotten dementia from the AIDS virus. You know, he's like not thinking straight. So now Joe and Dazzle said, would you believe DeRosa pulled a gun on Joey? And he says, he pulled a gun on my son? Greg took the gun and he says, come on, get in the car. I see Greg pull up. I was like, F So I was like, here we go. So I put a gun in everybody's hand. I said, let's go outside. I go up to the car, I shake his hand. He goes, what's going on with you and my son? I says, it has nothing to do with it. Your son has to do with the guy that owes me money. He tells his son, get out of the car and straighten your beef out with Mike. So he gets out of the car. He says, yeah, Joe, we've been friends for years. So he shakes my hand like everything's over. So he tells me, Mike, tell your guys to go inside. I should have caught on, but I didn't. My guys are walking away. And as they're walking away, I felt like I got hit with a baseball bat. He shot me in my shoulder and went, went to my neck. All I saw was Marvin. He went out shooting the whole car. You know, he emptied the whole clip on the car. 
Ronald Moran, a.k.a. Nessie Mormon, one of DeRosa's crew members in the Lucchese crime family. Because of him, I'm alive today. I get up and I try to run towards my house now. And as I'm running, he hits me again on the back. So it's skin my ass. And then he hits me again. Hits my side. So I got hit three times. And Greg got shot in the eye. Greg's bullet went through his nose and came out, took his eye out. Now I'm thinking he's dead. He's slumped over in the car. I'm thinking Greg's dead. Tell him, Jimmy, we got him. He goes, what are you talking about? I say, Greg, we got him. I look up, the car's gone. I was like, what the f***? The guy drove away with a hole in his eye. Greg got in the driver's seat and drove home. I couldn't believe what I saw. I mean, he was holding his eye, but he didn't know he was shot. Greg never failed on a hit. Greg, every person that he went to kill died. There's nobody that ever was able to say, I survived an incident with Greg's car. You just didn't hear it. I was the only one that did. And I was the only one that ever got to Greg. Greg Scarpa, on house arrest and with a gunshot wound to the eye, told the authorities that everything was fine. But prosecutors would revoke the house arrest and send Scarpa to jail. In 1994, Greg Scarpa would pass away from AIDS-related complications. A year later, Scarpa's status as an informant would be revealed during a racketeering trial for members of the Arena faction of the Colombo family. Mikey Flattop DeRosa would be arrested after a sting operation and would become an informant against his crew as well as members of other mob families. Like I said, I was locked up and I saw the time I was facing. I saw that when I was in, people started turning on me and telling, saying that I was cooperating when I wasn't. So I already got that rap. People stopped paying me my vig. I was like, what am I doing? I'm facing 30 years on one charge. I'm gonna get re-indicted on other charges. I'm gonna wind up getting 50, 60 years for what? And nobody's, nobody's keeping up to what they gotta keep up to, but I'm gonna sit here and do all this time and what am I gonna come out to? Well, he'll say he did it for his honor, he did it because this one was gonna kill him, this one. No, he did it because he's a selfish criminal and that's what selfish criminals do, they watch out for themselves. <laughs>